you know, went by in the area. So again, I sort of feel this little, this connection. Um, Walker's parents were Absalom and Susanna Jackson Walker. She supposedly was related to um, uh, Thomas uh, Stonewall Jackson, the famous Confederate general. That's, again, one of these little stories. Not quite sure if it's true, but um, that's the story. They joined uh, Patrick's Creek Baptist Church in 1810, and shortly thereafter they joined the Lower Fair Forest Baptist Church, which is not too far away. Now, Patrick's Creek is also um, significant because B.F. White was in the same area, went to church there. I believe his parents are buried there. Uh, William Bobo, who wrote his tomb, Mom's Off Home, is buried there at Patrick's Creek. Um, and I'm sure some of Walker's other relatives are buried there. And then Lower Fair Forest Baptist Church, uh, not too far away. Um, Patrick's Creek is one of these older style churches. It's a big white building. It looks, it's got some additions, but it looks old, I guess, for the most part. Lower Fair Forest Church looks like your stereotypical Southern Baptist brick steeple in the front building. It's not very picturesque, but they do have a plaque um, for William Walker, so that's, that's very nice. They, they, they recognize him. Um, but when William Walker was 18, his family moved to Cedar Springs Community, which is right outside um, of downtown Spartanburg. Um, and he stayed there for I mean, the remainder of his life, uh, where he was working on music and publishing his books and whatnot. Um, and the story goes um, from Jackson and others that when he was five, his mother taught him three songs, Solemn Thought uh, and French Broad, which are in the um, Southern Harmony. I'll talk about the individuals in a little bit. Um, and then a song called That Glorious Day, uh, which is related to another song. I can't quite remember what it is now. But it was in the, um, I think it was in uh, his second book. Uh, and then when he uh, was 18, he wrote his first song, supposedly, uh, called Solemn Call, and it's actually not in Southern Harmony, it's in the Christian Harmony, but I just said it in four shapes of Jesus in that. It's a, it's a good song, it's different than most of Walker's other songs, and in, in sort of melodically, the way it sounds, also the form of it is kind of tricky, you have to kind of pay attention to it before you repeat. Um, in 1835, the same year that he published the Southern Harmony, he married Amy Shans Go Lightly. And they had five sons and daughters. Now, Amy Shans go lightly. Do you know who she was? Thursa's, Thursa's sister. Do you know who Thursa was? She had White's, White's wife. So they're brother in laws, right? They were related. Maybe I'm related to BF White. <laughs> um, they had five sons and five daughters. <coughs> and so far as um, uh, Harry Eskew's. Uh, uh, Master's thesis said in 1960, their last home was still standing in Spartanburg. I looked on Google Maps. There's no house. <laughs> but it's kind of cool. I, I thought, well, maybe, you know, I don't know. But anyhow. Um, now, Walker, his main job, I mean, he was obviously a singing school teacher. He traveled supposedly, he says, thousands of miles uh, teaching singing schools. But there's no real accounts of singing schools of him, like what he did. Or, there's a few little accounts about his like personality, but not really teaching or not. Um, but his uh, other job was he worked for the, um, he ran a bookstore in Spartanburg. Spartanburg's not a huge town. It's, uh, it's, it's bigger than Jasper, but it's not a really big town. Um, and he also uh, worked for the uh, Spartanburg newspaper called the Carolina Spartan. And he uh, was quoted, agent for subscribers, money, and giving receipts. So it's kind of interesting when you can find a little Flips the newspaper back then where he has ads for his books and he'll kind of put in there, brand new book, you know, this, this thing that says, you know, just out, best book ever, buy it. You know, kind of thing. I think I have 40 in my hand out. Um, uh, in the mid 1850s, Walker also taught what were called normal music schools where he was training singing school teachers, so he was, you know, really well known as a singing school teacher. So that's just a really quick overview of his historical you know, history of Walker and Clyde. Um, the other things are, are mostly um, about his death that I'll go through, um, which are interesting stories. Um, a couple other things. Um, so he died in 1875. He's buried in Magnolia Cemetery, which is uh, in Spartanburg. You can go up there and see his, his tombstone. It's a, it's a beautiful stone. It has on the very top part uh, an inset of the Christian harmony. <coughs> It's like the Christian harmony made into his, his grave. 
Uh, and there's a singing there every year since sometime in the 90s. It's the, uh, uh, the South Carolina State Singing in memory of William Walker. And it's right down the street. Uh, now it's the church right down the street from his, from his grave. So they usually go sing for him after this. So a couple things uh, that are kind of interesting uh, in the history books about William Walker's death that I wanted to read. The first is actually from his um, eulogy. And I'm, I'm a little bit, um, this is kind of interesting because many of you may know the story about William Walker and B.F. White got into this fight, right? Supposedly. But Warren uh, still thinks that it's probably not over what people said it was over. But this fight where um, William Walker published the Southern Harmony and B.F. White was like a, uh, a co editor or whatnot, and he, he didn't give him any credit. So B.F. White got mad and moved to Georgia. As any South Carolina would get out of Georgia. <laughs> Um, but there's not really any evidence to support that. The move was what, five years later? It was seven years later. That's a long <laughs> road, I guess. Uh, Warren still thinks it was uh, more over property, some kind of property, some, you know, something that was sold. And so that, but anyway, his eulogy makes me think maybe, you know, there, people knew that there was something up. But, so this is, this is actually, this is a little long, a little hard to read because of the language of it, but I'll read it too. This gentleman, well known to our community for high literary taste and many social and private virtues, departed this life at his residence in our town on Friday last. His interment took place at the common cemetery of the town. A large and appreciative audience attended the funeral obsequies. The sermon by Mr. Vats, the regular pastor, was, a, was an eulogium of the highest and intensest character. Nothing too much was said. Nothing too, much, <laughs> nothing too little stated. Upon the journey, Mr. Walker's life has impressed itself. The future will develop, develop with the E, um, his usefulness. He was no ordinary man. His life, origin, birth, resources, and character will ascribe to him a life, um, oh, sorry, a higher position than our notes will afford. His whole life, in fact, is illustrative of his devotion and energy to the good of mankind at large. No schemes of practical benevolence ever met his disapproval. No effort to advance the cause of religion ever failed of his hearty support. As a Christian, <clears throat> no man does charge him with improprieties. As a citizen, he stands unblemished before the world. And the rest is about his, um, a as a father and whatnot. There's the same thing about singing, but, you know, unblemished. So. <laughs> I don't know if that's a comment on that, but I thought it was interesting. Another one interesting thing is a story from George Bullen Jackson about the funeral. The mysterious things that happened at his funeral. Uh, the stories of William Walker's deathbed are various. It is said that Mr. Walker died, as it were, with melodies on his tongue for the goodness and tender mercies of God. But his granddaughter told me that her grandfather could not even speak for some time before his death. She declared that about half an hour before the end came, he wrote with his finger on the palm of his other hand, R-E-A-D-Y. A uh, Mr. Brown, an old resident of Spartanburg, told me that he was at the deathbed of William Walker, saw him look at the clock, and heard him say, at 3 o'clock, I'll be in heaven. And Mr. Brown assured me that the old singer died at the time to the minute. <laughs> the stories of Walker's funeral are also interesting because, uh, because tinged with that variability which attends progressive traditional accretion. To <laughs> Jackson, <laughs> this is his writing. So at Walker's funeral, um, someone says that directly the body was brought in, a bird, pure white, perhaps a pigeon, lying on the floor near the coffin. It was driven into a room and the door was shut. After the prayer, when, he, when heads were raised, the bird was back again on the pulpit. But his granddaughter, uh, uh, Walker's granddaughter, told Jeff George Glenn Jackson um, that when she was at the funeral, she saw nothing of a bird. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look at that picture on the front. I mean, it's, 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 something's, you know. <laughs> Every time I see that picture, it's like this glowing face of William yeah. Walker. I'm sure he had a very amazing life. Um, around Walker's 125th birthday, so in the 1930s, a number of um, events happened to sort of commemorate him and, and his birth. 
uh, national music clubs around the country honored him. This was in 1934. In 1939, a marker was set in his grave in Spartanburg, and also that was the reprint of the Southern Harmony by the WPA. Yes, the, yes, yes. yes. Uh, so that was a pretty historic um, uh, event. Also in 1939, there was an article um, called Singing Billy's Book that was published in Time Magazine. And I was looking all over the, around the internet for, for this the other day because the way that it, the text read that I could access through the University Library, it seemed like there might be some cool pictures. I just found out about an hour ago there were no pictures. <laughs> Somebody from the library emailed me. But that article basically said, you know, we had this new book out. This is a really important uh, American musician and teacher, and this is where a lot of our hymns come from. And then it had a, a little blurb in there about the Southern Harmony singing at Benton, Kentucky. So it wasn't um, anything that would be of interest to us now as far as like new pictures or, or you know, something like that. Anyway, it was interesting that such a thing was, was published. Uh, uh, and then just a little bit later, in 1952, this is the new stuff that I've been working with here, here lately, um, a folk opera was written about William Walker. It's called Singing Billy. It premiered at Vanderbilt University um, with uh, lyrics by Donald Davidson. He worked at Vanderbilt and Charles F. Bryan, who was then working at uh, Tennessee Polytechnic Institute, which is, I think, now Tennessee Tech. Um, Davidson is also the person, if you've ever re re read this older article called Set Your Heart in the Land of Eden, he's the first person who wrote that. And the, uh, the two of them were also in um, conversation with George Pullen Jackson, um, who I think many of you, um, if you don't, George Pullen Jackson um, was really important in, um, uh, I guess, promoting, preserving what not the history of Set Your Heart, Shake Your Heart, and whatnot. So if you know, you know his name. Um, Anyhow, uh, this folk opera uh, was not a huge success. Um, uh, Brian had other music that was um, much more popularized and, and, and published and whatnot. Um, he had an opera called The Bell Witch. If, if you've ever heard about The Bell Witch of Tennessee, um, a, a famous haunt, uh, that one was uh, a bit more successful. But uh, it almost was picked up by NBC for a television production. I think I know why it was not picked up. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you a little bit about that in a second. Um, but anyway, um, it does have very pretty music. I finally, after many years, got a copy of the score. The music is, is very pretty, but the text and the drama itself are so little school. It's like, not much happens. Um, this is a copy of the libretto. So you can read through the story. Basically, it's not really that much about me, Walker. It's totally fictional. He comes into this town in South Carolina and is teaching a singing school, but everybody except for one person is really, um, that they, they think he's there to cause trouble. And so he's questioned and roughed up and all this stuff. And so it's, like a, it's a basically a battle between good and evil where this guy is accusing him of all this stuff. And uh, William Walker proves his, his um, I don't know, virtue. his virtue in a single. <laughs> that's, what, that's what one does. But anyhow, uh, it's a really, it's a really, really interesting opera. Um, I said that it basically is something between Oklahoma and Daniel Boone, but um, <laughs> uh, you'll just have to see it. You'll really have to see it one day, and I promise you, you'll get a chance to see it very, very soon, or at least a small part of it. So I'll just say that. Um, it, uh, the opera itself, uh, actually most of the music is, is, is written um, and the, there are not that many shape of tunes actually. There's Wondrous Love is in it, uh, Promised Land, Jerusalem, Evening Shade, and French Broad, which is in the Southern Army and Christian Army, but that's all the, the shape of stuff really there's, there's in it. Um, but let's see, what time have I got? Better start singing. Four, Better start seven. singing. What time is this class again? Three. Forty. Right. Forty? Right. Let me just, uh, I'll go ahead and go to the tune book since I want to sing mostly uh, the, these tunes that I've got. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about these for those of you who don't, uh, haven't been to this class before. So, Wee Walker published four tune books. The first was his Southern Harmony in 1835. There's been several reprints of this and, and uh, there's 
still, this is still in circulation. Um, and there's probably a little bit more info about that in your handout that I'm not going to figure out a little bit. Um, but this is the book that you know became really, really popular. It was, it was supposedly sold, uh, I think, 600,000 copies. It was very well known, and um, it, many tunes that we have in the Sacred Heart are also in Southern Harmony. Um, so it was just a really, really influential book. It wasn't the only, obviously, uh, Shake Note tune book that was at that time. Or there were others that came before it, but for some reason that one just became the thing. It was really, really, really important. I uh, kind of wondered Walter singing schools, and he was really big promoter in that school. Kind of got this role you know, from one of the um, other books. Uh, in 1846, he published his second book, The Southern and Western Pocket Harmonist, which was intended as a supplement to Southern Harmony. Um, it has a condensed room in section, it's sort of a small book, um, but it's also still in three lines. The Southern Harmony, if you don't know, has three lines of music. It doesn't have an alto part for low songs. There's a few that do, but not all of them. So we'll sing a couple songs from that. Uh, I went through the book, and there are a number of tunes that have Walker's name. Some are ones that you'll know, but many are very different. Um, I songs, actually. Um, so we'll sing a couple of those. And then in 1867, he publishes his second uh, big book, The Christian Harmony, where he switches from four shapes to seven, which I think reflects the um, trends of the time, the popular trends in hymn writing. He also adds altos. A lot of the songs in The Christian Harmony sound much sweeter, uh, but a lot of the older songs are still in there, so you kind of have this mix of a lot of different kinds of, of music, and we'll sort of demonstrate that with the, the different kinds of tunes that he got for us. And then his little, um, his last little book, which might be my favorite, it's like a little curiosity, it's cute and precious and all this, is 1873, His Fruits and Flowers, um, which is a Sunday school book, a little tiny Sunday school book. It's, it's, a, it's a, a sort of a small little book. I didn't actually bring mine, I forgot it, but you can, you can find it online and you can if you like. Um, it also, uh, for whatever reason, has music in three parts. I think probably just to be easier for, for kids to read. It's uh, because the music was meant for kids to do. Um, but I thought I would read you some of the titles that are in here because they're interesting. It has a bunch of moralistic songs. Two songs were called, I Must Not Tease My Mother. <laughs> Another one is, Be Careful of Your Money, Boys. There are some popular tunes and hymns that you'll recognize. Hot Cross Buns is in there. Shall We Gather at the River and Rock of Ages. Um, there are lots of little songs about nature in the first part of the book. Songs like Melanchthon, Pretty Cow, The Little Star, Busy Bee, and My Little Garden. There are a handful of Christian Army songs that you'll probably, you would recognize if you've seen Christian Army and, or, or Cooper book like Camp of Wild and the Wilderness, Brown, I Have No Mother Now. Um, there's a handful of songs you recognize from the Sacred Heart, uh, Invocation, Midnight Cry, Happy Land, Soft Music, um, and there's only one minor song in the whole book. It's called Invocation, which I don't know, but it's in the Southern Park. So I, I thought those were some interesting little facts about, about those. Well, why don't we go ahead and sing some of these? I gave you a list of in uh, The Sacred Heart uh, by William Walker, but I, I didn't pick any out to actually leave it here because I figured I wanted to spend more time talking about, about these. Oh, just quick, quick before I forget. Just for those of you who are new, because there's a lot of new faces I've not seen before, I just would do a quick show and tell. So this is the Southern Army. If you've not seen this before, this is just a modern reproduction of it. It's a, it's a scan. It's a little hard to read. This is the old hype set. Um, and then here's the Christian Harmony. This is the new edition, uh, the 2010 combined edition of the Christian Harmony, which does not use Walker's original shapes. This was done by some folks between Alabama and North Carolina and Georgia um, to combine two editions of the Christian Harmony so we don't have, we're not having a flop book or two different books. Um, this is a really nicely done book, but it uses the uh, Aiken shapes, a different set of uh, seven shapes. Not terribly difficult to uh, get your head around. And then recently there's been a, um, a reprint of the old uh, original Christian Army. Um, and it uses, like I said, what I call the Lucky, lucky Charms shapes. The little moon or earth just precious. <laughs> that is. <laughs> um, anyway, so I just kind of want to uh, sing through uh, some of these tunes. 
Let's start with the Southern Harmony tunes that in the front part of your handout. Now I'm glad for anybody to come up here and leave these if you like, otherwise we can just sing through them. Um, let's start with page two, The Good Physician. Does anybody want to leave this? By chance, any funny leaders? All right, we'll just go for it. I'll do it again. Sure. Page two can be The Good Physician. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, Part of it, but you know, 
for, for the first part anyway, it is largely for the time. Um, if it is for yeah. the now let's turn over and do the, the last song of the, I think of the Southern Harmony part. Yeah, the song French Brawl. So he says, and there's a slightly different story about this in the, in the Christian Harmony. This song was composed by the author in the fall of 1831 while traveling over the mountains on the French Broad River in North Carolina and Tennessee. Um, I, I'm not sure if that means he, I guess he wrote the text. Uh, he has a slightly different story in the Christian army where he says his mother, he learned from his mother. But the tune is really similar, I think, to Kedra. Yeah, 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 yeah. It definitely sounds like a different song to me, but I, I really like I think it's very, very pretty, pretty tune. Does anybody want to do this one? You want to go for it? Thank you.
near the end, <laughs> of the first, near the end of the first line. Um, the second half after the repeat is a little tricky uh, rhythmically. I'm still not quite sure how the words fit, but we'll just see what happens. I think it's and. I think you sing two notes and more and. Right. <laughs> and. 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 That's what I said. So. So. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
over a couple more pages to page 9. And we have two tunes here. Spartanburg and Breaker, which are not on the same page written. Breaker uh, is a really popular song, I think, um, and Christian Hermes sings. It's very, it's very pretty. People tend, tend to like the words. Um, he has a little note there at the bottom about the composition of, of this tune. So I'll, I, I don't want to say too much about the seven shapes. If you know how to see all the shapes, go for it. If you don't, Remember what happened the first time you came with Sacred Heart singing and you didn't know what fossil law was? What did you do? Blah, blah, blah. That might work here. <laughs> <laughs> we can't go through a dory. David Ivy's here. We don't need to. <laughs> I thought I was going to get away with it. Um, don't worry too much about it. Uh, I think a number of us here uh, probably know what's going on. Ma'am? Don't worry about it. That's the dose. I might want to this one if you think y'all know this one. I'm, I'm happy to do it. Alright. Uh, actually, it's Breaker. Oh, uh, Breaker. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Yeah. 
they went mad. They, I think they used to a lot more, and nowadays, I think, especially with Panther and me, we're doing the same things we do yeah. here. We're trying to keep everything consistent. Yeah. Um, I think starting we're starting to work so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but that for my, the for my, the we don't, we don't seem to do it as much. I don't know why. Um, all right, flip back over. How much time do you want for that? Four for you. Alright, I can do this in a minute. Okay, really quick, I'll read you. So, this, this last one on page 7, the last rose of summer, which you may know that little old popular tune. <laughs> so, William Walker uh, wrote the treble for this one. And this is his. Um, yes. So, in, in the little book, Fruits and Flowers, in his preface, he has a little message to the children, telling the children why they need to learn shape notes and, and uh, sing from this little book. He says, and I quote, My dear children, don't you want to sing? It seems to me I almost hear you say, Yes, sir, that we do. <laughs> well, then get your parents to buy you a copy of Fruits and Flowers. <laughs> get them to show you how to learn the notes called Do Re Mi. You can soon learn their names and shapes and tell them apart. Yes, easier than you did the first seven letters of the alphabet. So that's what he, he was, you know, he liked to do it. He was a little kid. And it's also interesting that in front of that book, which is his last book, he says that once you get older, you grow up, you can go out and buy, not just the Christian harmony, but he says you can go out and learn to sing and buy and sing from the Christian harmony and the Southern harmony. So he's still promoting both books, even though this is happening Christian. Now this one might be a little more tricky. It does have this DC, so it goes back to the beginning. Um, there's a little race note thing in there near the middle of the, of the song. I don't, I don't even know how to do that, so let's not do that. Okay, well, let's try it. Go!